Hi guys, today I'm going to do a quick presentation on Fazi and Hardy, 1988, uh, on the inverted U hypothesis, a catastrophe for sports psychology. And this is for the OCR specification for A2 psychology. Uh, so this is a bit of background about the researchers. Lou Fazi and John Hardy were two British researchers at the University of Wales, and they were dis dissatisfied with the inverted U theory as a description of arousal and performance in a sporting context. Their criticisms were, uh, one, somatic anxiety is not separate from cognitive, cognitive anxiety. Uh, the one affects the other. Two, when someone passes the optimal point and their performance drops, it doesn't always tail off gradually, but often plummets suddenly. Three, even if you tweak a player's anxiety back to the optimal level, performance doesn't usually recover from a collapse like this. So the inverted U hypothesis was a, a graph, uh, which uh, you can see in my previous video, but it had arousal and performance, and it was just an inverted U shape. So the more aroused you are, the more um, the higher your level of performance up until a point where it gradually declines once you go past. But this is this was found not to be the case. Fazi and Hardy suggest a different set of rules for how anxiety affects performance. Cognitive anxiety is the splitting factor, which determines whether arousal has a slow and gradual effect or a sudden and dra dramatic effect on performance. The inverted U is fine for showing how arousal affects performance with low cognitive anxiety. However, with high cognitive anxiety, a different pattern occurs. So what's this, what, what this is saying is if you have low cognitive, cognitive anxiety, then the, the, the graph, the arousal performance graph will be that of like the inverted U shape. So say if you've, you're already good at something and it's not causing you much anxiety, maybe like football or something, then your performance might follow that graph. However, however, under high cognitive, cognitive anxiety, if arousal go, goes past the optimal point, a catastrophe will occur. Performance drops suddenly. John Hardy compares this to, breaking, to a breaking wave. If you look at the graph, you can see how when cognitive, cognitive anxiety is low, performance rises to an optimal point with, arous with arousal then dips back down again. A classic inverted U. So... That's the back of the graph here. You can see that it just gradually dips. And this is like the um, Fazi and Hardy's model, catastrophe model for arousal and performance and, and cognitive anxiety. When cognitive anxiety is high, performance falls off, in a, off, off a cliff after the optimal point. So here you can see the optimal points here and performance just goes dramatically downwards and it's very hard to regain this prior level of um, performance once you've gone past this point. After a catastrophe, performance doesn't go back to its high level even if the cognitive anxiety drops back down again. Instead, cognitive anxiety has to drop back to baseline so that performance can start increasing again from scratch. This pattern is called hysterious. The tendency for things not to go back to their old state once a critical point has been passed. Low cognitive cognitive anxiety. I really cannot pronounce that word. <laughs> when cognitive anxiety is low, a smooth bell-shaped curve shows that as arousal increases, so does performance. And as the athlete becomes over-aroused, a slow and steady decrease in performance occurs. So this is the graph I was talking about earlier, the inverted U-shaped graph. But this is um, this is only applicable when cognitive anxiety is low. As you can see, there is not a dramatic drop; it gradually decreases. However, when there is moderate cognitive anxiety, the the, the uh, curve is more distorted in shape. Um, and it shows that as the athlete goes over the top of the curve, a fairly significant drop in performance happens. In order to return to the optimal performance, the athlete has to return to a lower level of arousal than that experience just before the drop in performance. 
This is shown by the recovery path in the diagram, which is right here. When cognitive anxiety is high, the, the um, graph becomes even more distorted than before. As the athlete goes over the top, a very large or catastrophic drop in performance occurs. In order to regain the level of performance that was reached pre-catastrophe, the athlete must return to an arousal le level well below that experience just prior to the catastrophe. So here is the theory in a nutshell. Physiological arousal is related to performance in an inverted U fashion when the athlete is, is not worried or has low cognitive anxiety. If cogn cognitive anxiety is high, the, the increases in arousal passes a point of optimal arousal and a rapid decline in performance occurs, the catastrophe, from which an athlete finds it difficult to return to optimal performance. Um, here is a question that you can have a go at. It's just a simple 10 marker. and It, it might be one like you get in your exam. So it's definitely worth having a go at if you feel like it. Okay, so this is the end of the presentation. I hope you um, understood what I was talking about and make sure you do try this. Um, thank you.